Dakota the Alien is airing now on TNT. Tell us about when you first got this script. What, what attracted you to such a, a dark type project? Well, I, I was introduced to the story through the first three scripts. I read the, the first three episodes, and um, I was drawn to the character that I play, of course, Sarah Howard. Um, she's the first female to work for the New York Police Department, and I was just thrilled at the opportunity to show such a pioneer, um, kind of groundbreaking character for 1896. Uh, you didn't get to see women in those positions very often, so I loved that aspect of the story. And I loved, um, yeah, there, there is darkness, of course. I think I tend to be drawn to darker subject matter in general. Um, and I, I, I loved getting to see this, the world, the world of New York during this time and um, the kind of corruption and the different areas of the city and who lived where and, and the dynamics, um, the dynamics of people trying to cohabitate in a very changing world. Um, and maybe I always, I, one of my favorite things when I first read it was the, the birth of forensics and science and psychology that we kind of see throughout the series. Sarah had a line in episode two saying, isn't it surmised that you know people's fingerprints do not change over the course of their lifetime? And I read that and was like, oh my God, of course, there would have been a time where people didn't realize that. It's hard to imagine in today's day and age of DNA and fingerprints and all of that stuff that of course there was someone who had to discover that and, and people learning about those methods and using those methods and applying them to, in this case, crime and, and crime solving. I was fascinated by that. Um, aspect of it as, as a I knew I would be as a viewer and then of course as you know an actor in the story well as you mentioned she's a woman in a man's world and really a first of her kind doing what she's doing yeah. um, and I, I, I catch little subtle nods to the current day in terms of you know women in a, in a man's world in different professions and mm -hmm. so forth is that something about the role that you really liked I did and I think you know we filmed this in March to September from March to September of 2017. So it was, we were filming it a little bit before it was like as relevant of a conversation as it is, I think, particularly right now. But now knowing that that conversation is happening in, in 2018 and then seeing these situations that Sarah's facing that are set in 1896, it's it's kind of disappointing to say that they're relevant and timely and using those words. Um, but I think that it is, I've met so many, I've met so many young women who have been watching the show who latch on to that and who you're able to kind of gain a perspective of how history kind of repeats itself and that these situations, we haven't found a way to completely solve them because they're still happening in a very similar way to, you know, 1896. So I think that it's been a cause for positive conversation and, and it's it's just by chance that it this this story has we people have been trying to make this story for so long, whether it be a film or, you know, now we have this limited series platform. So I think it's very um I don't think it's a coincidence that it's all lining up this way. I think that it was always meant to be. All of your characters have to deal with some gruesome things that happen to other characters and and I know I'm I'm sure shooting some on those days you really have to prepare for that and, and mentally and emotionally. Uh, right. how, how do you do that and then how do you get rid of that when, when you go home at the end of the day? Yeah, I think for me, I I think that it, I've kind of been able to trace it back to starting so young as an actor that I always, it, the lines between what was real and what was pretend were very clear. They were always made very clear to me. So I think that I've carried that throughout my life and throughout my work of being able to completely shut off the moment they say cut, I'm back to myself and I see that the the this corpse is not a real corpse. It's like rubber and, you know, blood that you can eat and whatever, you know, I see kind of behind that movie magic kind of facade, you know? Um, so I'm lucky that I've never I've never uh, brought any sort of heaviness or darkness home with me. I've always been able to separate that. But I think that's also due to the people that you work with as well. I think that especially me and Luke and Daniel, we had a very healthy perspective and we had such a great dynamic amongst the three of us and so much love for each other. We were able to get each other through that. 
Let's talk about them for just a moment. Daniel's character, to your character, and really anybody else he encounters, is very cold and and uh, not sympathetic really at all. Right. What what uh, what's it like working with a character like that? And then how yeah. is he different uh, in real life? Well, I just can't say enough about the friendship between the three of us. I'm literally in a group chat that they're together right now trying to make plans to meet up for dinner and I'm like getting all their messages because we're in this group chat that we created in Budapest. So our friendship has last lasted and deepened since the day we met and they're really dear lifelong friends and I'm so thrilled about that. Um, and then as actors, I just so loved working with both of them and Sarah has such a um, different and important dynamic with each one, you know, it's I think that Sarah is intimidating to Dr. Chrysler, and I think that they have a dynamic that you see throughout the series um, change, and they have growing pains at a certain point, and you see that even though Dr. Chrysler is such a progressive character in the story, and he's, um, you know, he he believes in ideas and theories that are not accepted in this time, there's sometimes still he's threatened by the notion of a of a woman, you know, uh, standing up to him or a woman being right and, 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 and him being wrong. We still kind of see that. So I love getting to, I love getting to have those moments with Daniel as Dr. Chrysler, but as a, as a human being, he's couldn't be more lovely and he's not cold. He's very warm and, uh, and just the best. And then, and then Luke is the life of the party, the definition of, of, of fun and, um, and he's 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 the guy that bursts into song, you know, when they say cut, like makes up a song about our surroundings. You know, that's who he is. As an actress, when you're on a project like this, that's so lavish in its production design and costumes, and how does that help you get into the role? And how to how to, you know that environment of of uh, it being such such high production values help you? Oh, it just helps you so much, I think, and it's so it's so I think. It's 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 I, I haven't worked on a production that was this kind of detailed and having actual sets and the costumes like there was nothing that was sort of make believe you know like everything was there yes okay the building of the Williamsburg Bridge that was you know it had to be CGI but but all those buildings and all the props and everything that we were coming into contact with was real from the period and it's so helpful. Um, as an actor, I think that was the thing that we felt so lucky that, that everyone wanted to make it as, as beautiful and rich and detailed as they could from the costumes to the sets to the props to, the, to, to every aspect of it. it was, that was first and foremost was the authenticity um, of the period. And yeah, as an actor, it completely puts you into... Into a into the characters' headspace is the you know closest thing to time travel that you can experience. <laughs> well, all of, all of your career really has been in film until this project. So what is there really a line anymore between film and television, and in terms of production values and scripts and 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 who you get to work with? I don't think so. I think it's been I think it's been maybe permanently blurred. <laughs> um, you know, I think that the core of of, of making something for film and television is the same, you know what I mean? You're telling a story, you're playing characters, you are trying to connect with people through a screen to make people feel something, um, to, to entertain. Um, that doesn't change whether it's a film or whether it's a TV series, limited series, whatever it is. That's, the, that's what actors are trying to, to do. Um, so that, that doesn't ever change, but I think that What's been so exciting about being a part of The Alienist is the amount of people that it's been able to reach. You know, a lot of the times you make a film and it comes out and it's in a couple of theaters, like one in New York, one in LA, and it's only there for these certain dates. And, you know, you either see it or you don't. And sometimes it's on demand later, sometimes it's not. It's, it's hard for people to, to find to find it. And um, that can feel disappointing when you put so much effort into into something and then it you feel like it can get lost just because just by chance um and so one of the best things about being part of the alienist for me is my 
the doormen in my building are watching it. You know, the people that I am, am uh, seeing at a restaurant, they're watching it. It's like, it's so accessible to, to people. They know where to find it. There's a particular time that it comes on and um, you can record it, watch it later. You can watch it that night, whatever. It's just like, so it's reached so many more people than a film that I've done in a while. And that's been so gratifying and exciting. And um, you feel like all this hard work that so many people put into it pays off through the amount of people that it, that it gets to touch. And I've, I've loved, I've loved the experience of talking to people who are watching the show and, uh, meeting them by chance has been really, really lovely. Well, a couple uh, questions to end with. We're an awards website, so I think this is going to be the kind of project that really uh, comes on strong with Emmy voters here in a few months. But nice. you were one of the youngest nominees ever at the Screen Actors Guild Awards. Yes. What do you remember about that uh, particular <laughs> night and experience? Um, I remember so much. It was, you know, it was my first time ever attending an award show of that magnitude and then being nominated. I was, I was nominated with um, actresses that I admired so much and I remember I was in the category with Cameron Diaz and Cameron Diaz was like the end all be all to me at that time you know I was like a little girl and I kind of looked up to her and we kind of she was blonde I was blonde like I don't know I saw something of myself in her and I remember I got to meet her and it was like so exciting and thrilling and um and and it's still, I, 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 I believe I'm still the youngest nominee, and I so I, I kind of I, I'm I'm I, I love that little fact. I got to go back. I was at the SAG Awards this past one. I got to present, and I don't know. It's always fun. The room kind of looks the same to me as it did. When I was well, they always say that's one of the best ones for an actor because it, it it's just the warmth well, of the peers, whole community. Yeah, totally. I think to be recognized by other actors and and uh, uh, your 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 peers is always is always a nice thing so it's a, a room full of supportive people and we're just coming off oscar season I, I can still remember for the past 12 or 14 years they they released a list of people that inv invited to join the academy and you were one of the youngest people invited yes. to join the academy so you've been yes. voting quite a while now i have been voting quite a while yes i have um that was also i remember i read i read that i was going that i was going to be asked to be in the academy on my like yahoo homepage when i was checking my email when i was like a little <laughs> girl and i called my mom and i was like this can't be true like i just I, I i it wasn't even on my radar that was a possibility for me so that was very exciting and again a group of people i'm proud to be a part of and um you know just people who love who love um who love celebrating Movies well, I always love asking this when I've got an Oscar voter in front of me. Not that you have to give specifics, but uh -huh. just when you've got an acting category in front of you and you're thinking about those four in a given year, what's going through your mind and how do you go about, what what, what types of roles and, and performances tend to get your attention? God, it's so, it's, it's such a hard thing because you are, um, you know, can there ever be a best actor? I don't know, you know what I mean? There can be something that just touches me in a different way because it's a feeling or a story that I recognize or that I connect with in a specific way. I think it's just a, a, about an instinct and a, a, a connection. Um, you know, like I said, I think as an actor, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to make a connection with a human being through the screen to touch somebody, to make them feel something. And so whatever that, Whatever makes me feel something um, is usually what I vote for, I guess. <laughs> well, well we, we might be, uh, those Emmy voters might be uh, touched and, and feeling something off of the alienist. Well, that's so very nice. Maybe we'll see you on uh, the Emmy red carpet in a few weeks. That's very nice. Thank you. <laughs>